Numbers are not my strong suit, but I read a lot to Lolito, Lateo, Lateo, I forgot the name of the book. <clears throat> chi or Chai, I don't know how to say it, whatever. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my January wrap-up. I read a total of 12 books this month, which... Honestly, I'm surprised about because I did not think I was going to. As I said, like, in my resolution video, totally thought I was going to get maybe four done a month, but I managed to read double that? Is that double? I don't know, math. So without further ado, let us get started! The first book that I read for the month of January was Impulse by Ellen Hopkins, and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It follows Vanessa, Connor, and Tony, who are three teenagers who tried to commit suicide. They develop a friendship after they are admitted to the same psychiatric hospital, and it's basically the story of their friendship and them trying to get through this program. It was very predictable and easy to call, and the big plot twist, which there's always a huge plot twist in Ellen Hopkins' book, it was very obvious what it was going to be very early on in the story, so that was kind of the downfall for me and why I only gave it three out of five stars. The second book that I read for this month was Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas. I'm not going to say a lot about this book because I have a full review if you want to check it out, but I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and you should all read it. The third book that I read was My Sister Rosa by Justine Labister. You're probably saying that wrong. We should all be used to this by now. But I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Chi Taylor who has grown up protecting his 10 year old sister Rosa. Rosa isn't like other girls her age. She is a psychopath. Originally, his family is from Sydney, Australia, but due to his family's business, it causes them to move around a lot, and they end up in New York City, where Rosa has many opportunities to play her little game. I loved this book. It was so cool. I find, like, psychological things really interesting, and so it was right up my alley. I loved all the characters in this book. The diversity in this book was insane. There's, like, characters from everything you could possibly think of. There were white characters, Korean American characters, African American characters, disabled characters, there was even like gender neutral characters. So there was a lot going on which is awesome. I think that Chi was an awesome main character. I loved his voice. I thought it was really realistic for a boy teenager. Rosa was definitely my favorite character. She was very disturbing. But that just made it so much better for me because I love those characters. I loved being able to see inside Rosa's head when she would talk to Chi. I loved when they would have their conversations and she would just be so like neutral telling him everything that she thought. And it was just so cool to see inside her mind. The first half of the book was very, very slow paced. And once you're at the second part of the book, the last like 100 pages or so, that's when things really pick up. So if you can deal with a slow beginning, then definitely pick up this book because the ending is just great. The fourth book that I read for this month was More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I know, I finally picked up this book. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Aaron who just lost his father to suicide and although he has a very loving girlfriend, Genevieve, he can't help but feel a little bit sad about it. After trying to commit suicide himself, he meets a new friend named Thomas who is everything that he needs in order to be happy at that time. After making a shocking discovery about himself, Aaron turns to the Tio Institution, which says that they can alter your memories in order to make you forget certain things. I did really like this book, although I found that the beginning, first half of it, was very slow, so it was kind of boring. Although I do understand the need for the backstory, I wish that it was fast-paced throughout the whole thing. The second half of the book was definitely more entertaining for me and I wasn't able to put it down when I was reading. It definitely didn't feel like a debut novel and the writing was really easy to read and I'm definitely excited to read more of Adam's work. The fifth book that I read was Dark is the Sea by Heather Blanchard. This book follows Rowan who, after her mother's disappearance, she moves to London to live with her very eccentric aunt named Kitty. Upon arriving, Rowan discovers that she comes from a very long line of witches, and as she's stepping into her newfound powers, she discovers that she is being hunted by a very ancient spirit called the Hunter. I love the cover of this book. I think it's so pretty. Girls walking away are like my weakness when it comes to books, and they're like instant buys for me. 
Unfortunately, this book fell very short for me and I only gave it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The beginning first couple of chapters were really entertaining, they grabbed my attention and I thought I was really going to enjoy it, and then as the story went on, it became so predictable and it just felt rushed and I just... it wasn't for me. At times it was really difficult to distinguish between Rowan's dreams and reality because there was no like transition, it was just like one second we're in the real world and then we're in Rowan's dreams where monsters are chasing her and you're like, wait what, what's going on? And then she's like, and then I woke up and you're like, okay. Also there was a crazy amount of insta-love in this book and, and as we know, your girl hate her insta-love, so this book just wasn't for me, but maybe some of you will like it. It's paranormal, so if you like paranormal. <sighs> the sixth book I really did not enjoy, and it is Kiss Me, Kill Me by Lauren Henderson. See, I didn't even know the author's name because that's how much I did not like this book. The book follows 16-year-old Scarlett Wakerfield, and she's not very popular. And then one day, she is invited to her first elite party. She discovers that her crush, Dan McAndrew, is going to be there. Little does she know, things aren't going to go exactly as she imagined, and when Dan leans in to kiss her on the night of the party out on the terrace, she definitely did not expect him to suffocate in her arms. So now everybody is blaming her for Dan's death, and... She is going on a quest to figure out what actually happened to Dan and why he died that night. The book was very bland and boring, I hated Scarlett's voice, I thought she was very judgmental and she stereotyped everybody, there was so much body shaming in this book and it just bothered me so much and she kept calling her best friend a butch American. And I just, why, like, I, why? Like, she's supposed to be your best friend and also, like, that's just mean, like, I just, I hated this book. It was super predictable, it wasn't really a mystery at all, it was obvious what happened and I'm just done with this book. The sixth book that I read this month was Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. And honestly, I think that this book was so overhyped that I expected more. I ended up only giving it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The 20 year truce between the Witchlands is about to come to an end, which means that each nation is trying to fight for the upper hand. Safia, who is the Doma of Karath, something like that is a truth witch, which means that she is able to tell when someone is lying or telling the truth. Her thread sister, Izul, is a thread witch, which means that she essentially can tell what people are feeling and when. After an unfortunate experience, the two girls find themselves on the run, being hunted by Odin, who is a blood witch who has latched onto their scent and won't stop until he finds them. I feel like the world building at the beginning of the book was kind of confusing and hard to follow at times. There were just so many witches and different subtypes of witches that you were kind of overwhelmed. I did really love the relationship between Safi and Izul. I think that their friendship was awesome and it's something that definitely needs to be seen more in YA books. I kind of find Safi to be annoying at times. She kind of blew up and let her emotions take control of her for like really stupid reasons. I did really like Izul though, I thought she was very interesting and I want to see more of her and hopefully Wind Witch is more about her than Safi to be honest. The next book that I read is called And We Stay by Jenny Hubbard and I gave this book a 1.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. If you can't tell, I did not have that great of a star rating reading month, but I read a lot. I was originally drawn to the book because of the cover and also the blurb it sounded really interesting, although it wasn't at all. It was very boring and bland. The writing style is written in a third person present tense and I'm not used to that so I really didn't enjoy it at all. It kind of felt very hard to connect with any of the characters because of it. I feel like there was absolutely no plot to the book and it just kind of dragged on with nothing actually happening. So overall I just found it super boring and bland and I did not like it. The next book I absolutely hated with a fiery passion, and it is The Little Woods by McCormick Templeman. It follows Callie and her sister Claire disappears from a boarding school, so she decides to go to that same boarding school. Why? I don't know you, why you would want to do that, because your sister disappeared from the same bed that you're now sleeping in, but besides the point, whatever. And basically she's trying to discover what actually happened in these little woods. Everything about this book is just a no. If you can't tell, I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars. If you really want to hear my thoughts, go check out my Friday Reads video. I talk about it. I was only like halfway through, but I absolutely hate it. And um, if you're really, really interested, I'll leave my Goodreads review of it down there and you can check that out because I hated it and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay. The next book that I read for this month was Are We There Yet by David Levithan. Sometimes I really like his 
books, other times I really hate his books. This one I really did not like. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Elijah, who is 16, and his brother Dan, who is... 23 and they have nothing in common they don't like each other and so his parents decide that they are going to go on a trip to Italy together neither of them are very thrilled about this idea until they meet Julia and it's basically that whole story I found it very bland and boring I didn't like it at all nothing happened in the book really. and I didn't like Danny or Elijah as characters and Julia really bothered me so basically the whole story I was just like no this is boring and I hate everybody so was not for me. The 11th book that I read this month was Losing It by Cora Carmack and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Bliss Edwards who is a 22 year old who is about to graduate college and she's also a virgin. So her very loving friend decides that she is going to lose her virginity. So she takes her to a bar and she meets a very handsome stranger and they go home together and then she comes up with a very interesting excuse. And you guys should all read the book just for the excuse because it's hilarious. She ends up running out on this handsome stranger who is naked in her bed. And then the next day in class, just so happens to be her new professor, is this naked stranger. It's a very cute new adult book. I liked it. I thought it was very fluffy and it was what I needed after all the terrible books that I read before. It goes by super fast. It's kind of cliche and obvious what's going to happen, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. And the last book that I read for the month of January was Half Lost by Sally Green. I'm so happy that I finally read this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I don't want to give a synopsis because it is the last book in a trilogy, but I enjoyed it. The ending really bothered me though because one of the characters is killed off. And I'm just not over it because why he needed to be killed off, I don't know. But whatever. It's fine. I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good ending to the trilogy and... That's about it. Alright guys, so that was my January wrap up. If you guys read any of the books, let me know what you guys thought of it because I like discussing things. So I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!